preach, we are to teach, we are to fight. So where you lead me, I will go. Touch my lips by your strength, I will go. I will go. Hello everyone, we're so happy that you chose Mission Live GND on this beautiful Sunday evening. And before we go any further, I would like you to go ahead to like and to share our pages so that others can know that our Sunday evening evangelistic series is about to begin. Our topic for this evening is, remember me when you come in your kingdom. Remember me when you come in your in your kingdom. Before we go any further, I would like for you to bow your head with me as we pray. Loving Father and our God, we thank you for life. We thank you for health and strength, dear God, and everything that you saw fit to grant unto us. Indeed, Lord, we are forever grateful. And as we are about to go into this evening's service, dear God, we pray that by some means, whatever will be said here and, and be done also, will be of some means, dear God, of drawing each and every one of us one step closer to you. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And we thank you for staying with us. And remember that the topic for this evening is remember me in your kingdom. Remember me when you come in your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. The hearts of the message of the gospel is that Jesus, he welcomes the repentant sinner no matter how grievous his offense. I know that some people feel that they are too far gone to sin to ever be forgiven. Let me put it this matter plainly. It doesn't matter where you've been sleeping. It doesn't matter where you've been drinking. It doesn't matter where you've been hanging out. It doesn't matter if you have broken the Ten Commandments, all of them, or one by one. It just doesn't matter. Do you know why? Because you can be saved right now. And before we go any further, you, our choristers and our musicians, they are standing by to lead out in this evening's song service. So I invite you to sing along with them as we make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Join us as we sing our first hymn, number eight. We gather together to ask the Lord's blessings. We Distressing 
Yeah. Uh-huh. 
Christian joy below. 
we say thank you to the Gospel Apostle Band, that's our musician. We thank you also to our choristers for this lively song service. And may God continue to bless you as you minister for him in song and also in music. The thief cried out to Jesus, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. I believe at that moment when the thief said that to Jesus, he was saved. As Jesus was hanging on the cross, paying our penalty for sin, he made a promise to a dying, repentant thief. By the grace of God and the power of Christ, that promise, it was kept. The thief's sins were washed away, and his death that day was the entrance to paradise. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that really, really good? If this man can be saved, anyone can be saved. If there is hope for him, there is hope for you. If he can make it into heaven, so can you. If Jesus would take him, he will certainly take you. He was pardoned before he lived a single righteous day. In one transforming moment, a man who was not fit to live on earth was made fit to live in heaven. I take my stand with him. I claim the same mercy. Do you? We all get to heaven the same way by the grace and the mercy of God. All that God wants from us and all that he will accept is simply faith in his son, Jesus Christ. When we place our faith in the Lord Jesus, in that very moment, we are saved. Pastor Bess, Pastor Samora Bess, he was appointed to do our intercessory prayer. So I would like for you to put into the comment section all your prayer requests so that as Pastor Bess prays, he can lift up your petitions to God. So go ahead, put in the comment section all your prayer requests as we turn our attention over to Pastor Bess. A pleasant good night to everyone. At this moment, I invite us to adopt the most appropriate posture as we go before our God in prayer. Father in heaven, we come before you this evening in the wonderful name of your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank you, dear God, for sparing our lives and for allowing us to see this point of the day. Father, we ask that you would forgive us of all sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness so that as we worship tonight, this evening, Lord, our worship will be acceptable in thy sight. We thank you, dear God, for all those who are viewing. We pray that your Holy Spirit would bless each and every one of them. But in a very special way, God, we commend tonight's, this evening's program into your care. We ask, Lord, that you would be with every aspect of the program. We also pray, dear Father, that you would be with the preacher, the presenter, the one who is responsible for proclaiming the word of God. We pray that your anointing will be upon that person. And Lord, as they proclaim the word of God, your name will be lifted up on high. And someone, dear Father, may be drawn into a saving relationship with you. We pray, Lord, that as the word is proclaimed, hearts will be touched, Lord. Lives will be changed and, changed, and many will glorify your name. Father, we pray that as those who are viewing online, they continue to view this program and support it. Lord, it would draw them also into a saving relationship with you. Father, we pray that everything that is said and done here this evening will just be for your glory. And Lord, as a result of this evening's proceedings, someone, as I said earlier, will get to know you as king. So bless the entire proceedings and may your name continue to be glorified on high. We thank you for this opportunity where we can spread the gospel via the World Wide Web through the different platforms that, that is available to us to spread the gospel. We are truly thankful. And Lord, we give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor for you are worthy to be praised. So we commit, we commit tonight's proceedings into your hands. And may your name be glorified, we pray. In Jesus' name with thanksgiving. And let everybody say, Amen and Amen. 
And we say thank you to Pastor Bess for praying on our behalf. Now, go get your Bibles if you don't have them with you. And while you go get your Bibles or maybe your gadgets, whatever it is you'll be using for the scripture reading, remember to like and to share our pages. And also remember that our topic for this evening is remember me when you come into your kingdom. Remember me when you come into your kingdom. Now I invite you to turn your Bibles to the book of Luke. The book of Luke, the chapter is number 23, and we are going to read from verse 39 to verse 43. So that is Luke chapter 23, verse 39 to 43, and you can read along with me, okay? And one of the factors which were hanged on a rail saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. But the other answering rebuke him, saying, Dost not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we received the jury reward of our deeds. But this man had done nothing amiss. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto you, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. This is the word of the Lord. Sister Kimberly Nathaniel, she will now bless our hearts with an item of special music in song. So let's listen keenly as Sister Kimberly Nathaniel blesses us with a special item of music in song. God can do anything. With anything, he can heal any hurt, any suffering. Every cross, every care, every burden he'll bear. For anyone, anywhere, God can do anything. He does nothing into something is the giver of life hope to the hopeless and a sight to the blind he makes impossible possible when there's no other way he makes the blackest sin white as snow that's why we can say God can do anything, with anything. He can heal any hurt, any suffering. Every cross, every care, every burden he'll bear. For anyone, anywhere, God can do anything. The fairest of ten thousand, my soon coming King, Jehovah, Messiah, the reason why I sing is Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, my Savior and Redeemer, my closest friend. Oh, God can do anything with anything. He can heal any hurt, any suffering. Every cross, every care, every burden he'll bear. For anyone, anywhere, God can do anything. Oh, God can do anything with anything. He can heal any hurt, any suffering. Every cross, every care. Every burden he'll bear For anyone, anywhere God 
God can do anything for anyone, anywhere. God can do anything for anyone, anywhere. God can do anything. And we say thank you to you, Sister Nathaniel, and may God continue to use you and bless you also in your ministry for him. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. These are words of tremendous faith. These are words that we should live by daily. Those words, remember them again. Remember me when you come into your kingdom. These are truly, truly words of tremendous faith. It takes a lot, you know, to tell Jesus to remember me when you come into thy kingdom. Just take a moment and think about a thief on the cross right there, you know, asking Jesus all of these. These are definitely words to live by. And so we have with us Elder Andy Paul, he's an elder at the Seventh-day Adventist Church at Moya, and he is going to do our sermon for this evening. So I invite you to say a prayer for him. Go ahead also, like and share so that persons can join in and get the sermon. There may be a huge blessing in store. So let's give Elder Paul our undivided attention as we keep a prayer in our hearts for him as he proclaims the good news. A pleasant good evening to you. I want to take this opportunity to thank you for uh, inviting me into your homes and uh, wherever you are to share this important moment uh, with you. Uh, we are discussing this evening, remember me when you come in your kingdom. Uh, let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before your throne of grace. You are holy and righteous and faithful. Lord, there is none like you. I ask you to have mercy upon me and to massage my brain cells that I may communicate the very message that you would have wanted me to communicate tonight. And I ask that you will bless all of those that are listening right now for Christ's sake. Amen. Have you ever been in a bad situation and wondered, can anything good come out of this? Have you ever been down and out and from where you are, it seems like all hope is lost. Come with me tonight. In the book of Luke chapter 23, it records the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. Now, I want to put something in context here, and that is, uh, with the crucifixion of Christ, uh, Satan had actually set the stage uh, to ensure that the plan of salvation did not fully establish, even at the cross. It was a direct attack of Satan on the very plan of salvation. Not only that he used one of the, the most humiliating means of putting Christ to death. Uh, but ladies and gentlemen, to add injury to insult, he actually placed him between two thieves. Now, follow me tonight. There were several people around, uh, the, around uh, the cross. They were led by the priests, and the popular opinion was that Christ, friends of mine, was not a good person. In fact, uh, the popular opinion was that uh, the guy was a liar, uh, the guy was an insurrector, uh, the guy was not who he claimed to be, and uh, everyone around the cross were actually chanting, uh, he claimed he was the son of God, come down from the cross. 
Now, I've got some important news for you. Now, the very stage uh, that Satan had set to deflect or to prevent the plan of salvation, uh, Christ, uh, who is verily God, used that very stage uh, to do something important, which is to save a sinner. Follow me now. In Luke chapter 23, Luke chapter 23, and we will take up the account uh, from verse 39. Luke chapter 23 from verse 39. And this is what it says. It says, then one of the criminals who were hanged uh, blasphemed him saying, if you are the Christ, save yourself and us. The very statement uh, that this criminal, in fact, uh, this uh, translation put it the criminal, uh, but the King James uh, Version says he was a malefactor, and what that word actually means is that he was a thief uh, or, or a criminal or a liar. And I want to inform you that the very statement he used was the statement that was the sentiment of the priest. In other words, uh, that thief who was on the left of Christ was following the popular opinion of the day uh, that Christ was only a malefactor. So this is what he says. Then one of the criminals who were hanged blasphemed him saying, If you are the Christ, save yourself and us what a sentiment what a sentiment i want to inform you tonight that neither the thief on the left nor the crowd was left without evidence that christ was the son of god Follow me tonight. I repeat, neither the thief on the left nor the crowd was left without evidence that Christ was the Son of God. In fact, it was so clear uh, that the hardened centurion knew it was the Christ and he said, this must be the Son of God. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, friends of mine, uh, not only the centurion, but I am here to tell you uh, that the Son recognized him uh, because at that very hour, the Bible says uh, that the Son refused to shine. It was dark. Hey, the earth recognized him because while he was on the cross, the earth quick recognizing the son of God and I am here to tell you uh, that several others would have known that this was the son of God uh, not only because of the earth or what happened uh, but ladies and gentlemen uh, friends of mine with the entire administration of what happened you could have seen a character uh, on the face of Christ that was different than what anyone saw Sin, it was sure that he could not have been a criminal. But the chant of the thief and the crowd was, he saved others. Come down from the cross. Save yourself and save us. What a statement. While the Savior was dying, while the moments of probation for that thief on the left was expiring, he chose, he chose, the Bible says, to cast his faith in popular opinion that Jesus was just a malefactor. He chose to place 
his, his, his confidence in the opinion and even the sentiment of the crowd that Jesus should come down from the cross. The statement that Jesus should come down from the cross uh, was intending to mock and to ridicule the Son of God. How many today? In the final moment of earth's history. And some people in the final moments of their lives. Are spent instead of searching the scriptures. But putting the confidence in popular, in popular opinions of the day. I wish to inform you fellow listeners. That. Popular opinion has no significance as it relates to truth in the word of God. Popular opinion has no re relation to truth as it relates to the word of God. I want to say notwithstanding the attitude of the thief on the left, Thank God there was a thief on the right. Follow me tonight. The thief on the right, while he was hanging on the cross, heard the very same statements that the crowd made and the very same statement uh, that, his, that his colleague, which was the thief on the left, made. Not only that, but he observed his surrounding and he looked at all that happened and weighed the evidence and knew definitely that what was happening at the cross was no ordinary thing. The one to whom he is uh, hanging besides is different from what he have ever seen. Imagine you are actually taunting, ridiculing, and mocking someone. And they would not even respond with any means of hatred. It said something to him. I want to believe that the Holy Spirit in the background was walking on his heart. And probably he saw the darkness that pervaded the area. And maybe he must have uh, witnessed or felt the quaking of the earth. And he knew definitely that the one to whom he is hanging besides is the son of God. And he decided to speak. We're going to take up the account in the book of Luke chapter 23. And from verse 40 onwards. And hear what it says. But the other answering rebuked him saying. Do you not even fear God? Saying you are under the same condemnation. And we indeed justly. For we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said to Jesus, Lord, remember me when you come in your kingdom. Remember me when you come in your kingdom. And verse 43 says, And Jesus said to him, Surely I say unto you, Today you will be with me in paradise. And Jesus said unto him, Surely I say unto you, Today you will be with me in paradise. I want to say thank God for the thief on the right. The thief on the right, ladies and gentlemen, those in the hearing of my voice chose not to put his faith in popular opinion. After observing Christ, all he could see on the face of Jesus Christ is an 
innocent man. And as a result, he said, but the other answering rebuked him, saying, Do not even, do not, do you not even fear God? And in verse 41 it says, And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. In other words, uh, what the thief said represented uh, in a nutshell three important points. Number one, his statements represented the fact that he was confessing his sins was confessing his sins. We justly receive what we have done. In other words, what the thief was saying, uh, we being on the cross here is a just reward, a punishment for what we have done. In the book of 1 John chapter 1 and verse 9 says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Uh, the first step uh, in this man's uh, statement represented that he confessed his sins. Secondly, it also suggested that he repented. Repentance is a critical rule to salvation. In fact, in Acts chapter 2 and verse 38, turn with me uh, to the book of Acts. Acts chapter 2 and Acts is just after uh, John, the gospel according to uh, John, and we would uh, find verse 2 and look at verse 38. Acts chapter 2 uh, and verse 38. And it says, uh, Then Peter said unto them, Repent, and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sin, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Here, friends of mine, we are seeing clearly in the statement of that thief was genuine repentance for his sins. He first of all confessed that we are receiving a just a recompense for our deeds, and then we are hearing the utterance of a confession of someone who is dying. You know, I choose to call the thief on the left the unbelieving thief. On the other hand, I choose to call the thief on the right the believing thief. Follow me here now. Uh, the third uh, revelation from the statement uh, of the thief on the right is that not only he was sharing uh, some thoughts of confession and repentance, but it also revealed uh, that he was believing. No, come on, follow me here tonight. He believed in the provision, in other words, whom, whom he saw at next besides him was not just a male factor, but ladies and gentlemen, whom he saw before him was actually the savior of the world. As a result of that, in the very last remaining moments of the thief on the cross, he chose to place his life in the hands of Jesus Christ. Somebody say, Amen. The gentleman believed. How do I know he believed? I know he believed because the statement he made. He said to Jesus, uh, Will you remember me when you come in your kingdom? You see, It is important to note 
that when conviction comes to the heart, quite often, the statements that comes out of our mouth may not truly be the sentiment of what is in our hearts. And sometimes we are unable to say exactly what is in our hearts. But I thank God for the Holy Spirit that is able to actually understand and you know, communicate the truth, understand uh, what the heart actually means. And uh, Jesus very well knows uh, that the statement of asking Christ uh, to, be, to, to actually be part of his kingdom, he was actually placing his confidence confidence uh, in the provision that Christ has made and accepting him as his Lord and Savior and accepting the very sacrifice that Christ has made. Will you remember me when you come in your kingdom? Mark chapter 16 and verse 16. Turn with me to the book of Mark chapter 16 and verse 16. And this is what Mark chapter 16 and verse 16 says. It says, He who believes and is baptized will be saved. But he who does not believe will be condemned. The scripture is clear. He who believes and is baptized, the Bible says, shall be saved. And he who believes not shall be condemned. All of these three components actually demonstrates the plan of salvation in a nutshell that if a sinner confess, repent, and believe, the scripture says he shall be saved. The question tonight is, was the thief on the cross really saved that day? Can we be certain that the thief received salvation? The text, ladies and gentlemen, reveals that. And if you should pity with me at the conversation uh, with the thief on the cross and Jesus Christ, and if you should try to envision what happened, uh, I could imagine uh, that Jesus with his hands outstretched uh, and his uh, head must have been, uh, you know, in front of him, not looking neither to the left nor to the right. And when the thief decided to speak with the words of confession, Jesus must have leaned a bit and turned towards the thief on the right. And ladies and gentlemen, it is interesting to note at how Jesus responded. The whole plan of salvation is knitted in the very response of Jesus Christ. Now, follow me here. In the book of Luke chapter 23 and verse 43, it says, Luke, chapter 23, and verse 43. Luke, chapter 23, and verse 43. This is the response of Jesus. And Jesus said unto him, Assuredly, I say unto you, Today you will be with me in paradise. Ladies and gentlemen, as we read this text this very moment, it is one of the scriptures that is thrown in a lot of, contro in a lot of controversy. And it is well intended by the enemy. 
And uh, one of the reasons why uh, uh, this is surrounded with a lot of controversy, it is because uh, Satan has no interest in mankind getting the true input of the statement that Jesus made. And some choose to interpret that what uh, that what Christ meant was that the guy was going to heaven the very day. But let me state that three days after, and that was on resurrection morning, the Sunday, uh, Christ said to Mary uh, that I have not yet ascended to heaven. Now, it is extremely important uh, to understand what Christ actually meant. So we're looking at the response of Jesus. I say unto you today, you will be with me in paradise. You know, some years ago, I went to, wanted to go to the United States. So I had to apply for a visa. And in order to get to the United States, when I observe it, about three things or four things need to happen. Number one, you had to do what you call an application form for the visa. Number two, they had to, you had to secure an appointment. And they told me that during the process of the appointment, of the time of appointment, uh, they actually do what you call an investigation. And then you have what we call an approval or disapproval as to whether or not you will get the visa or not. That is to go to the United States. And it is even more difficult uh, if you should actually uh, become a citizen of the United States. And you know, in almost all countries, uh, in order for you to get there, there are some protocols. But I am here to tell you that it is different as it relates to the plan of salvation. You see, when the thief on the cross said to Jesus, will you remember me in paradise? Uh, he did not say, uh, wait, wait, wait a while. You need to fill up an application form. He did not say to the thief, listen, you need to have an appointment. He didn't say to to the thief, my friend, I need to investigate your life. And the reason being that uh, the salvation or the plan of salvation was laid for mankind before the foundation of the world was laid. Come on, uh, follow me here. And the purpose for which it is because it is the intention of heaven uh, to seek the salvation of man with great urgency. You're not following me tonight. I am saying to you, the various steps to get a United States visa, if you were the thief on the cross, you would not, you might not have made it to the U.S. Thanks be to God, man. That there is, there is a quicker way and because of what heaven had done even before at the foundation of the world was laid. When a person who is dying on the cross call upon Jesus, he is able to say today. But what does the today really signifies? The today, friends of mine, actually signifies, hey, when he said, I say unto you today, uh, Jesus Christ was giving the thief on the cross the very assurance that the confidence he put in him uh, will actually be responsible for him being saved the very day. Uh, what Christ meant is that I don't have to give you an application. I don't have to give you an application appointment because I am verily God I can actually save you today hence the reason why Jesus was able to say to the thief on the cross 
I am making that important statement today. I am giving you the assurance of salvation today. You don't have to die. Follow me here tonight. You don't have to die. Even the death of the cross. Wondering. If you would ever be part of the kingdom of God. And my uh, fellow believers. Uh, uh, there are several people today. Who are waiting for some important event to surrender their lives to Christ. But I am here to tell you like the thief of the cross uh, if you should only confess in the provision that Jesus had made and confess in him and place full confidence in him. The scripture says that the same statement that is made towards the thief on the cross can be made towards you I say unto to you today you shall be with me in paradise I like the response of Jesus assurance of sin it also reveals that heaven has made the provision in order to treat sin with emergency must treat sin with emergency. And the response of Jesus also reveals uh, that it is his desire that every person be saved, even the thief on the cross. Even the thief on the cross. What that signifies? It actually signifies... Heaven is not too concerned with who you used to be. Heaven is not too concerned with your race. Fellow believers, heaven is not too concerned with your profession. What heaven is concerned with is your genuine repentance and placing your faith in Jesus Christ. Genuine repentance. And placing your faith in Jesus Christ. As a result of what transpired at the cross. Every sinner might know that wherever he is. Whatever the circumstances might be. At once you utter the word. Uh, remember me when you come in your kingdom. And you do that by faith expressing and placing your confidence in the sacrifice of Jesus. The words are surely I say unto you today. You will be with me in paradise can be spoken to you. What a pleasant way for the thief on the cross to come to an end. Ladies and gentlemen, as you listen to me tonight, I just want to inform you that Christ loves us with an everlasting love. Not only that he loves us with an everlasting love, but his desire is that every one of us can come to the saving grace of our Lord and Savior. But just before we conclude, man, there is one more question you might want to ask. And the question is, uh, how could a thief make it to the kingdom of God? How could a thief make it to the kingdom of God? What an important question. And I am here to tell you uh, that one of the reasons why a thief uh, can make it to the kingdom of God, it is because uh, of the sacrifice of the very cross. You see, ladies and gentlemen, uh, when Jesus died on the cross, he actually died died in our place. In other words, his death become ours. And did you know that when a person dies, uh, 
all criminal investigation uh, or criminal proceedings in a courthouse is dismissed against the person because he would have died after all, man. You cannot convict a dead man. Neither can you sentence someone who has died. So similarly, uh, when the thief accepted Jesus' death as his own, uh, the very life that he used to live, uh, he now died in Christ, and that life is now canceled. And what the law sees, he no longer sees the thief on the cross, but what the law sees is a new man that is walking in newness of life. And I want to say Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Simply because when someone exercised their faith in the promise of Jesus Christ and confessed their sins and accept him as the Lord and Savior and accept his death, the Lord that condemns no longer sees a sinner, but he sees someone walking in newness of life in the grace of Jesus Christ. This is exciting news. And because of that exciting news, as we round up tonight, I just want to say, Lord, remember me when you come in your kingdom. If it is your desire to join me in saying this, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, give heaven a wave as we say, remember me when you come in your kingdom. May God bless you. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for the truth that was revealed in your word. Lord, I tried to explain it in the clearest light. But in reality, words cannot completely put together what has been revealed by Jesus Christ on the cross. And I want to say thank you for what you have done for us. And as we express our faith in you tonight, Father, we believe by faith that the very same words that were spoken to the thief on the cross is spoken to us. And we now have the assurance that Jesus has saved us for Christ's sake. Amen and amen. May God bless you really good. And we say thank you very much, Elder Paul, for those words of hope and those words of life. And may God bless you also as you continue to preach for him, as you continue to share Jesus in your ministry of bringing the words to others. We thank you to our online viewers for staying with us. We're so glad that you always choose Mission Live. And just to give you a reminder of our upcoming programs right here before we do our, our closing prayer, just remember to join us, join the prayer intercessors tomorrow night and also on Thursday night at 8 p.m. Join them also on Sabbath at 6 a.m. for an hour of prayer. The Zoom ID is there on the screen, but I'll call it out for you, 874 and the passcode is there too, but I'll call it out also, 013803. And using that same ID and the same password, you can also join the prayer intercessors between 12 noon to 1 p.m. on Sundays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays. And our other upcoming programs on Mission Live GND this week, feel free to join us. We have Pastor's Corner on Tuesday at 11.30 a.m. with a rebroadcast at 8 p.m. Then we have Youth Live Unplug on Friday at 7 p.m. Sabbath morning service, 9 a.m., which will be followed by the Sabbath afternoon service at 4 p.m. And you can feel free to join us next Sunday right here on Mission Live as we continue our Sunday evening service. Now... I would like for you to bow your head with me as we pray to end this service. Our Father which art in heaven, Lord, hallowed be thy name. We thank you for all the participants. We thank you also for all our viewers, Lord, and everyone that made this evening service a possibility. We pray in a special way, dear God, 
that as we are about to face this new week, that you will grant unto us fresh and new mercies as we go forth. Bless us and keep us. And if it is your will, dear God, that you give us a good night rest, that you do so and you wake us up to see another day, we give you thanks and praise for that. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. And may everybody say, Amen. Okay.